Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am here today in Uherski Brod in the Czech Republic at the CZ factory, by gracious invitation of CZ, to take a look at some of their cool historical firearms. And what we're taking a look at today is the original pattern of the CZ Bren. This is the CZ805 Bren. So, this develops, this project develops in the early years of the Czech Republic, after the Velvet Revolution has overthrown the communist government of Czechoslovakia. At this point, the Czech military is armed with the VZ-58. Those rifles are getting pretty old, and uh, the Czech Republic is interested in affiliation with NATO. They're looking for a 5.56 caliber rifle, and they recognize that they really need to rearm the army with some new standard rifle. So, um, circa 2005, the requirements for a new rifle are put out there. There's an attempt to use the CZ-2000s, which are essentially a 5.56 AK. Doesn't go well. That's a story for a, a different video. In 2005, they come up with the, the standards for what will be the next Czech Army rifle. Uh, CZ, as a company, actually takes on this uh, project from an existing, a, a different company in, Czech, in the Czech Republic that was developing it. It was originally a design from a guy named Ladislav Finderak, uh, who had done a number of other interesting small arms that we'll take a look at uh, another time. Uh, in 2006, CZ and Czech Weapons, Finderak's company, start working together on the project, and in 2007, CZ takes it over as, a, as, as the sole um, company involved. So this becomes solely a CZ project in 2007. Uh, fundamentally, what we're looking at is essentially an AR-18 style of rifle. A short stroke gas piston, a multiple lug rotating bolt, uh, firing 5.56 NATO standard ammunition. Now, the, the Czech military uh, accepted this rifle in its final form. Uh, in the very beginning of 2010, the rifle was formally announced uh, and put on the market for other sales in 2011, and it would only last about five years. So in those five years, there were actually two different generations of the 805 Bren, and we have both of them here. So we have the first generation here, and the second generation here. And before we take a closer look, I want to point out one potentially confusing bit of terminology involved with these rifles. There is first generation and second generation, and then there are also A1 and A2 pattern rifles. And in the case of the 805, A1 indicates a long barrel, in this case uh, I believe 14 and a half inch, and A2 indicates a short barrel for paratroopers. And we actually have both, uh, both of these rifles are short barreled guns, that's the A2. So you have generation 1, A1 and A2, generation 2, A1 and A2. Anyway, with that aside, let's take a look at how these work and how they were changed and why. So we'll start with the Gen 1. Uh, we'll take a look at the changes in features between the 1 and the 2, and then we will disassemble one of these so you can see the internals. Now, the most distinctive element of the first generation 805 is its magazine. Uh, CZ designed their own proprietary magazine. It uses an AK style uh, release lever, and it's this very distinctive transparent blue color. So it holds 30 rounds. It essentially does all the same things as a Stanag magazine, but it is proprietary to these guns. In addition, they are all fitted with folding stocks, side folding stocks. Uh, nothing actually holds this in position, uh, it's just a little bit of spring tension. There is a little metal plate and a couple of springs inside the hinge mechanism that pushes it just that last little bit into position. Of course, when it's in the locked position, we have a nice big lug there that snaps into place. One of the requests from the Czech military was to have uh, replaceable back straps on the pistol grip, which sounds like a sort of a forward-thinking, uh, you know, interesting idea. We see that on pistols. We see it in particular on CZ's pistols, among other people's. And they did, in fact, make the 805 rifles with replaceable back straps. However, the Czech army never actually ordered any other style of backstrap, so while it is replaceable, there's nothing different that you can replace it with. I'll point out here we have a military uh, proof mark. That's the cross swords. This, this particular rifle was made in 2011, uh, which means this is from very early production. 
uh, one of the very first series. SHE is the, uh, the old Soviet era uh, code for the CZ factory in Uhersky Brod, and they still use that there, which is kind of cool. Um, also point out this does say, this does have sort of a typical commercial style of safety warning on it. That seems like it was done simply because it seemed to be the Western thing to do, uh, and it is not done on the standard issue Czech military rifles. So it's a little unusual to see that on this particular example. The fire control group is a little bit unusual in that it specifically has semi-safe, semi two-round burst, and full auto, and that was very specifically uh, required by the Czech military. And the controls are ambidextrous, so the magazine release of course is ambidextrous, and there's a selector lever on both sides. The charging handle is also switchable, so there's a slot for the charging handle on both sides of the upper receiver, and you can put it on whichever side you like. And then lastly over here on the receiver we have CZ805 Bren, and that is the Uhersky Brod uh, little symbol. It is a stylized UB in the form of a pistol, and made in Czech Republic. Now the most distinctive change uh, in the second generation was moving from these original proprietary polymer magazines to simply a Stanag AR-15 magazine. Uh, and this will take any standard AR-15 magazine. Obviously a, a good choice if you want to have NATO arms compatibility. But there are a whole bunch of other uh, design changes, some significant, some pretty minor, and so let's take a look at all of them from one end of the rifle to the other. Starting with the muzzles, the gas block is the same. Um, this does have an adjustable gas block, although you have to actually push this little detent pin in to be able to adjust it. Um, that stayed the same on both generations, but the muzzle device changed. So the original first generation rifles have this enclosed birdcage style flash hider. Uh, and these muzzle devices, by the way, are identical on both the long and the short versions of both generations. So they went from a flash hider to an actual muzzle brake, a compensator here on the second generation. The charging handle changed. There were complaints that this original charging handle uh, was sharp and you know, had corners and caught on things, and so it changed to a much more rounded, smooth style there. So again, first generation, second generation. There is a, a bit of a redesign of the magazine well, because of course this went from a proprietary magazine with an AK style catch to a Stanag uh, magazine well. So instead we now have to have a button on the side. And this has ambidextrous uh, magazine releases, so there's a button on both sides. That wasn't necessary back with this style of catch. Uh, both of these rifles, however, also have the manual uh, bolt lock button up here. One of the complaints with these uh, in military service was that there is no bolt release. This allows you to lock it open, but the only way to release the bolt is to slingshot the charging handle back. The first generation gun over here has symmetrical ambidextrous selector levers. On the second generation they actually extended one of them to make it a little bit easier to reach because, frankly, the range of throw of this is pretty significant. It goes from all the way horizontal like that to close to vertical, and it is much easier to operate it with an extended uh, lever. However, if you have this on both sides it's going to interfere with your trigger finger. So I believe, I'm pretty sure that they made extended ones for both sides, and you could pick which, which type you wanted on which side, depending on whether you are left or right handed. Lastly, and also very distinctively, the stock design changed. So it's actually kind of funny, on like the very last version of prototypes before these guns were formally adopted by the Czech military, uh, they had a stock that was both folding and telescoping. And the military, in like 2010, looked at those prototypes, and one of the changes they wanted was to get rid of the telescoping mechanism on the stock. So when the gun was adopted, the first generation has a stock like this that is fixed in length, but does fold. Button back here. So that's your first generation stock. With the second generation, 
Uh, it turned out they actually did want the stock to telescope. So they kind of went back uh, and put the telescoping feature back into it. So we now have a four position telescoping stock and it is even conveniently marked one to four there. And it also has a cheek riser on it for use with optics. And even the cheek riser is swappable. You can take the stock off, flip the cheek riser around and set it up for either left or right handed use. So uh, an extremely completely ambidextrous rifle, which is pretty cool. Overall, the 805 was purchased by a couple of countries in addition to being formally adopted by the Czech military in 2010. So in 2014, the Slovakian army decided to purchase 805s. Um, they didn't replace all of their rifles with 805s. Actually, it's a relatively small order, but um, they were purchased. They, uh, guns were also sold to Mexico and to the Philippines, plus a number of other small you know, uh, specific organizations, police units, that sort of thing. So generally speaking, this was a fairly successful project for CZ. Obviously, it would become very successful if, where it would lead later on. But uh, within it, about two years of the initial rifle delivery, some of these problems that led to the second generation uh, became clear. And uh, there was a, a program with CZ to slowly and kind of quietly refurbish, rebuild some of the first gen guns into second generation guns to address some of the soldier complaints. So uh, overall, I should point out the, the full length rifle, the A1, weighs in at like 3.5 kilos or about eight pounds, which doesn't sound that heavy, but it is also relatively heavily forward balanced because of the light polymer stock and a fairly chunky muzzle device and gas block up at the front end. Um, and that's something that was uh, soldiers were not a big fan of. So if we take a quick look at the sights, these, the, the 805s were all shipped with a set of folding iron sights. It is a simple uh, partially hooded post in the front and a rear aperture, uh, windage adjustable of course, and with two apertures, a really big ghost ring sight and a finer precision aperture. So you can use either one of those and they just flip back and forth. Now interestingly, the Czech army was in kind of a hurry to get these guns and CZ opted to not take the time to develop their own sights. Instead, they actually outsourced this and purchased sights from Troy in the United States. Now, in addition to that, when the guns were issued to the Czech military, they were issued with Miopta red dot sights. Um, this is, it's a simple, backwards. It's just a plain red dot, but it's a fairly large and relatively heavy um, sight. So not the most popular thing, although they were really pretty bomb proof sights. Um, very durable, just a bit bigger than a lot of people would like. All right, now let's take the rifle apart. There are two pins holding everything together here. However, they don't work together. They're independent. So we're going to start by removing the front pin. These are not captive, although on the second generation guns they added a couple of holes in the back end of the buttstock to store those pins. Once I pull this front pin off, I can then remove my uh, lower receiver, magazine well, and fire control assembly. Next up, interestingly, we sort of have a two-part assembly on the stock. So the stock hinge is out here and this locks onto a second block that is actually held in the receiver. So we have to take this out and we're going to do that by removing its pin. There we go. We'll stash that in the stock as well. Then I have a button here that I have to depress. That's going to push the recoil spring in and allow me to slide the stock unit off. Now in theory I can also actually take this sort of extension receiver block out by pushing that button in again and there we go, sliding this whole unit out. So kind of some redundant features here. Once we get in here we can pull out what is very much an AK looking captive recoil spring pull the bolt back to here 
and we can just slide the charging handle out. You can see at this point the charging handle can go in there, or I can flip it over and put it in the other side. And then it's just a very simple matter of pulling out the bolt and bolt carrier assembly. There's the hole that the charging handle goes through, so this is very much a reciprocating charging handle in the rifle. Normally at this point we would then go ahead and pull the bolt out. Um, however, on the Bren 805 this is actually as far as an individual soldier is supposed to disassemble the rifle. So what you would do is pull this pin to get the firing pin out. However, this has been peened in place on the opposite side so that it's, it's basically a, a one-time use pin or, or you have to uh, re-peen it if you try to take it out. So this is an armor level disassembly stage. Um, mechanically though the way this works is just like every other AR-18. Um, we have a cam track here, uh, so when the bolt carrier reciprocates it is going to have a little bit of free travel to allow pressure to dissipate in the barrel, and then that cam track acting on this pin forces the bolt to rotate to unlock, and then the whole thing can cycle backwards. So we have a plunger ejector, we have an extractor, very AR-15, AR-18 looking, and a firing pin on the back. I can disassemble, I can take the gas plug out here, but I have to push this little plunger pin in to rotate it, rotate it 180 degrees, and then we can pull out the whole assembly. This is also very AR-18-like, although in this case the return spring on it is captive, and in fact this is pushing against the bolt carrier all the time. So it's uh, much easier to put this in before you install the bolt carrier. Uh, a relatively large diameter gas piston up here, larger than a lot of the other AR-18 uh, derivatives, and uh, that's pretty much it. There are your two gas ports. You've got a, a normal operation and a fouled operation, and they are used by locking the thing in place on one of these two positions. And that leaves us with just the aluminum upper receiver with the barrel fixed in place. These all came with uh, tri-rails on the front as well as a full-length rail on the top. Uh, a bit of a cheese grater effect up here, especially with the cut in the center. Um, this kind of has a reputation for destroying gloves uh, in the, the armies that use these. And there you go, there is a fully field-stripped Bren 805 second generation. And uh, really this field-stripping procedure is identical. The internals are essentially identical for the first generation uh, version of the gun as well. Overall, there were a number of complaints uh, from the Czech Army about the 805 Bren. Some of these, of course, were addressed with the, uh, the upgrade to the second generation, but some of them were really kind of more fundamental problems. One of them, perhaps the most significant of them, is that the gun is heavier than it needs to be. There's a lot of space where weight could potentially be saved uh, in the design of the 805. Um, it has a lot of sharp edges. It's also, aside from just the, the weight, it is forward balanced. So uh, you have a lot of mass out here with the gas block and you have a really quite light polymer stock and that causes the gun to feel heavier than it actually is. And it's heavier than it actually needs to be. So um, this would eventually lead to CZ going back to the drawing board and saying, okay, how we, there's some things we can fix about this rifle, and there are, some also, there are also some of the original Czech military requirements that really we'd prefer not to use, and now that we have this contract perhaps we can convince the military to get a better rifle. Some things like the two-round burst, um, and the, well, for example, the lack of a way to drop the bolt. You can manually lock the bolt open, but you can't actually drop it short of slingshotting the charging handle. So, those product improvements would lead to the CZ Bren 2 uh, in 2016, but that is a subject for a second video, and we'll be taking a look at that a little bit later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'd like to give a big thanks to CZ for inviting me down here to take a look at some of their uh, older production firearms like these. Check out the description text for links to all of CZ's social media. They post cool historical stuff there as well as their modern current production items. Uh, 
Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.